and let's magnify the living word of God. Let's exalt the reality of the truth. He's exalted his word far above his name. Let's give thanks to that we are privileged to have access to by redemption. Give him thanks from the depth of your heart. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. Lord, grant me an unforgettable encounter with your word tonight. Go ahead and pray. Grant me an unforgettable encounter with your word tonight. Nothing transforms like a raw encounter with the world. Lord, tonight, grant me a raw encounter with your word that will trigger my next level turn around. Pray that prayer, somebody who means it, somebody who wants it, somebody who desires it. In Jesus precious name we have prayed. One genuine encounter with the world is worth much more than a lifetime of labor. A lifetime of labor. What a lifetime of labor cannot generate a genuine encounter with God. And let me tell you what a genuine encounter with the Word is. And the Spirit entered into me when He spoke unto me. And set me upon my feet to engage it. An encounter with the Word sets you on your feet to engage it. It sets you. A genuine encounter with the Word is not what you write down. It's what triggers your action. Triggers your action. And the Spirit entered into me when He spoke unto me and sat me on my feet to engage with it. That's the implication. When Matthew 3 entered me, I didn't need any counsel. It steers me to enter into a covenant with God. Every word that truly enters, you can't drag. That's an encounter. It's not what the preaching was very great. So. An encounter is what enters you and sets you into motion. It enters you and sets you into motion. Please understand the difference. Understand the difference. Otherwise, you'll be accumulating notes without anything to show. Now, let your word enter me and set me for my feet. Let your word that sets men on their feet enter me. Let your word that sets men on their feet enter me. Let your word that sets men on their feet enter me. Every time I approach your word, let the word that enters into people and sets them into motion be my experience. It's so important. Pray that prayer if you want. Pray that prayer. Every genuine encounter with the word sets the individuals on his feet. To engage with it. So help me, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. Somebody came in March this year, March, March 2021. Children have been out of school for two years. Dan Troden. 
almost down and out. Heavens directed him here and just had an encounter with the world, engaged with it. And you had the life testimony last Sunday. It was last Sunday, I think, third or something service. Life, life testimony, himself and the wife. March, my God, testifying in October. Not that it happened in October, but has become a testimony of reality. That's what it means to have an encounter with the world. That's what it means to have an encounter with, 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 with the world. That's what it means to have an encounter with the world. There was no self-consideration for me when I encountered the world on prosperity. Life, driving, restless. Try to take the world by storm with heaven's prosperity. That's the meaning of an encounter with the world. When I had the word on church growth, my God, same month, not same month, following week. Ba, go, ba, go, ba, go, ba, go, ba, go. See where it has brought us to today. Every true encounter set into motion. If you are not into motion, it's not an encounter yet, it's a revelation. Amen. As we conclude this today, unveiling the obedience that works, get set for a steering of your spirit to so see every commandment as targeting your better life. In the name of Jesus. Father, thank you tonight. Take all the glory. In the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. Um, please be seated. Please note that the world cannot deliver without man's obedience. You are not ready to depend. There is no method you can use to be saved. You can be in 20 service groups. It's not equal to salvation. Revelation without application equals frustration. Deceiving your own self because nothing will come out of it. Nothing. We come out of it. The benefit of the world cannot be realized without our obedience. If you will hearken diligently to my voice, observe to do what I command you, I, God, will set thee on high above all nations of the earth, and all these blessings will come to you and overtake you. The benefits of the world is inaccessible without our obedience. Joshua 1 a, this book of the Lord shall not depart from your mouth. You may sit upon it day and night and observe to do the things that are written there. Then you make your way prosperous. You can't assess those benefits without observing to do what is written there. If you be willing and obedient, you eat the good of the land. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. Why call ye me Lord, Lord, without what I tell you to do? It won't do nothing to you. Luke chapter 6 and verse 40, 46. Why call me Lord, Lord? Call me by my name, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Shama, Jehovah Skeno, Jehovah Greek, Jehovah Hebrew. You can call any name, it won't make a meaning. It won't make a difference. It won't make a difference.
There are too many believers without the benefits of redemption seen on their lives. Because they will not do what they know is commanded to do. Or that's not you. Your story is changed. And we keep changing from one level of glory to another. Be ye therefore doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own self. For if any man be a hearer of the word and not a doer, it's like a man that looks at himself in the mirror and walks away and forgets what manner of man he looks like. But whosoever looks into this perfect law of liberty, he not being a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. Obedience is work. Obedience is not confession. It's profession. It's a profession. Obedience is work. Obedience is work. Obedience is work. You can ask Abraham what it is. <laughs> he rose up early in the morning. And after three days of trekking, at that extreme age, he saw the place afar off. My God, we are not to where I took one more day, because the mountain you can see it afar off. But to climb it, it's not a joke. Obedience is work. That's why many shy away from it. Obedience is work. Particularly, obedience out of season. Obedience in season could be very cheap, but obedience out of season, when things seem to be out of place, and yet, you must not murmur. That's work. You must not complain. That's work. You must be grateful. That's work. They call this sacrifice of praise. Amen. That's work. Nothing seems to be praiseworthy around you, but you must praise Him. Or you remain there for life. That's work. Obedience is work. You hold your income in your hand, it is less than one third. The needs of the moment, and you still must pay tight. That's work. The landlord is chasing after you, and all that you have can't handle it, and you have come under your own obligation based on the work to pay your tight. You pay your tithe and then landlord calls and say, I just had a feeling you shouldn't have to pay. Obedience is work, particularly out of season. Out of season obedience. I had a very strange visitation tonight and I'm going to run through it. Um, I want to do a run down on what we have mentioned since the month began in this midweek series. Just line by line to create a, remember, I mean, a reminder for you. <laughs> you will need it. What is obedience worth? Or what is an obedience? Quickly. Obedience is the only way to prove the validity of any biblical truth. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusted in him. The only way to prove the validity of any truth scriptures. Doing whatever God says. Now, number two, doing whatever God, whatever the Word says to do 
we always commit God to confirm his word in our lives. Fill the water pots with water. Not put water in the water pots. Fill. Fill them. Keep filling. So they will know you are a big fool. Fill the water pots with water. And do that in the open right here. Fill. Not put some. And he confirmed this war. Cast your net into the deep. He confirmed this war. Doing whatever the word says to do, we always commit God to confirm his word. Number three, passing the obedience test is what enthrones believers in the kingdom. Obedience test. It comes in one after the other and another and another. All aiming at your enthronement. You'll find Abraham passed the test in Genesis 12, passed the test in Genesis 17, passed the test in Genesis 22. He was just on top of his word to come. Secured blessings upon his generations forever. <laughs> Not only enthroned here with an army of himself, to himself, he still sat on a throne in heaven with Lazarus at his foot too, like Jesus said. All enthroned patriarchs in scriptures obeyed their way through to enthronement. Just watch. you find them on a roll. Obedience. Obedience. I never buy my head to a graven image and throne Daniel all through his life in Babylon. Shirt Mesha and Abignego were enthroned in the land via their undeserved obedience. Obedience may be costly, but the end result is priceless. All along. Obedience is gateway to a world of supernatural breakthroughs. Do what I said. You'll be the head only and not be named. You'll be above only and not be named. You'll be the head and not the tail. You will learn not to many nations and you shall not borrow. A world of supernatural breakthroughs. Obedience is gateway to all supernatural manifestations. All. You obey me, I will manifest myself to you. Just obey what I ask you to do and watch me manifest myself to you. Christ, our perfect example, was obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God also has highly exalted him. God showed up. His obedience provoked supernatural manifestation and gave him a name above every name. The name of Jesus, everything, every nation bow of things in earth, things under the earth, and things in heaven. Philippians 2 5 to 11. All is now obedience. Obedience of faith will always commit God's integrity to perform. Go forward. They went forward and the rest he gave way. We may not have prayed for great things that we experience in our life, but we must have obeyed ourselves into them. We must have obeyed ourselves into them. The man that was one blind, 40-year-old, just simply obeyed and came back saying, No word came from his mouth. He just returned with his sight and began to testify. 
receiving, believing, and obeying the instruction of the word is what makes it work. Say with me, receiving, believing, and obeying the instructions of scriptures is what makes it work. We serve a covenant keeping God, not a Father Christmas God. He watches over his world to fulfill it. It's his word at work in us that attracts his hand on our life. That makes us a wonder to our world. Until our part is played for the delivery of any provision of redemption, God is not committed. My covenant will I not break. No altar those things that are gone forth out of my lips. God is not committed until our part of obedience is fulfilled. Where our obedience stops is where his blessings stop. But if you will not obey, the following causes shall come. So the blessing stops where obedience stops. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 14, all the way to 66, catalog of courses. We must maintain a covenant mentality in our work with God or we end up frustrated. God will not do what we are yet to obey as he commands. God will never do it, no matter how many years of prayers. That's why many, many prayer warriors are weary. As the Lord great pleasure in sacrifices than obeying his word. To obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. 4 Samuel 15, 22 to 23. Has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. No spiritual virtue is a substitute for obedience. And no excuse or explanation is tenable with God for our disobedience. Saul so said, We brought these things to sacrifice to our God. How could we have destroyed everything? What was the instruction? destroy everything. What's the explanation? To sacrifice to the Lord. It looks justifiable, but not with God. No excuse is tenable for disobedience in the sight of God. Why did you go ahead to offer a burnt offering? Oh, oh, the people who are going to scatter from me. So I forced myself to line up with the people. He said, now your kingdom is gone. No reason is tenable with God for our disobedience. God does not enforce obedience on anyone. It's simply a choice that individuals make. If, if, it makes it a choice. Obedience speaks louder than voice. Cast your net on the right side, they did, and enclosed great multitude. There was no, oh God, when we cast it, do something. Obedience speaks louder than voice. Abraham stepped into the direction of blessings through his obedience without a voice. Get out of their country and so Abraham departed. Circumcised all the may born in your house. He went ahead on the spot and did it. No remarks. Sacrifice only because his son, he rose up early in the morning. He wasn't chatting. Oh God, remember how much I waited for this gift. We are you say. In Isaac shall my uh, is a promise be then I will sacrifice him. 
No comment. Obedience without voice gave Abraham his place in destiny. It speaks louder than words. Go around the wall of Jericho seven times. No sound, no voice. On the seventh day, seven times. My God. What if they throw stones on us from the wall? What will they fire us? Seven days, they will know that we are around. They just walk around the place as commanded, and the walls of Jericho sank. Everyone went straight before them. Obedience speaks louder than voice. The less of obedience provokes God's supernatural manifestations. Blessed is the man that feared God, that delights himself greatly in his commandments. His seed also shall be mighty upon the earth, my God. Delight. Not coerced. Not pressurized. It provokes supernatural blessings. Supernatural supplies answer to obedience. God speaks to you, I want you to take that step. And you take it, you unleash blessings on your life. That's how the widow Zarephat got it. She was with him for three and a half years in obedience to an instruction. That's how the prophet's widow came out of debt, simple obedience to instructions. You never so far lack and want any more in your life. Amen. When our obedience is complete, all oppositions bow. So that when your obedience is fulfilled, you will avenge all disobedience. They surrender. All oppositions surrender to our obedience. All oppositions surrender to our obedience. Second Corinthians ten, three to five. That's how much obedience is worth. That's how much, among many others, that obedience is worth. What I'm saying that is to help you connect with the demand of obedience for you to see the word of God come to in your life. No shortcut. No, whatever it tells you to do, do it. You don't want to remain in the same situation. Whatever it tells you to do, do it. It may not make sense, but it guarantees results. It may not be high standing in the eyes of men of small mind, but it never lacks proofs. It never lacks proofs. They were laughing them to scorn until they tasted the wine. My God, we thought these folks are dummies. They have changed their mind. Simple obedience. Now the obedience that works, let's outline a few of them. We are reminding ourselves of the things that have gone on all through the week. In case you miss anyone, you can connect. You get the uh, DVD, you can run through this somewhere. It will help you connect. The obedience that works is characterized by the following. Revelation rooted obedience. Not just doing what they say. You have a revelation of it. That this is what to do for this to happen. Revelation rooted obedience. Prompt obedience. Delayed obedience can be costly. It robs us of our best in God. Prompt obedience. Abraham get up, he departed. Prompt obedience. Whosoever first steps into that pool is made whole. It's not just stepping, it's stepping promptly to be made whole. Any truth of scriptures you don't run with instantly. The fire goes out. 
you may not catch it again. Willful obedience. If I do this thing willingly, I have a reward. Willful obedience. The obedience that works. Love motivated obedience. Not things motivated. Love motivated obedience. I know him whom I believed. I'm persuaded that his word, what he says in his word is what he does. Love motivated obedience. If I offer my body to be born and have no charity, it profits me nothing. It profits me nothing. If I have all knowledge and understand all mysteries and have no charity, it profits me nothing. Love motivated obedience. Unreserved obedience. That means unadjusted, unamended obedience. You just take it all. Take it raw and swallow it all. That's what he said. You may have several views. It won't change what God commands. Pocket your views. Unreserved obedience. Practical obedience. Show me your faith without your works. And I show you my faith by my works. I believe you, Lord, but you are not making, you are not taking steps. That's fake. It's self-deception. It delivers nothing. Cheerful obedience. When joy with us, harvest is lost. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and gladness of heart. Therefore shalt thou serve thy enemies. He has commanded us, thou shalt serve the Lord thy God. And him only shalt thou worship. But serving him without joy is a cause. Get excited. It's a privilege. A divine privilege. It's a privilege of divine election. Get excited serving God. Don't need to be pushed. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 47 to 48. I, I got that 1977. The number of those encounters I had in my life, I could tell the date of most of them. I mean, 90% of them. The one I don't know the exact date, I know the month. Encounters are not cheap to forget. They are not cheap to forget at all. They are not. At 20, I found out that as the ostrich lays eggs and hatches them not, so it's a man that gets riches and not by right, he shall leave it in the midst of his days, at the end he shall be a fool. I was 20 years old. Bright life that makes me look away from whatever is not mine forever. I don't want anything to cut short my life. I don't want to end up as a fool. I was 20 years old and I'm now 25. Praise God. That's what encounter does. It's just one strange obedience in your life. Good conscience based obedience. Good conscience. And not hypocrisy. Not make them see me kind of obedience if I don't go what do they say. Good conscience based obedience. First Timothy one nineteen. Hold the faith and the good conscience, which some haven't put away concerning faith, has made the shipwreck of their lives. Haven't therefore deceived ministers who have obtained mercy? We fail not, but we have ignored all hidden things of dishonesty. Don't handle the word of God deceitfully, but commend us, commending ourselves to everyone's conscience. 
as we declare the truth. Second Corinthians 4, 1 and 2. It takes good conscience-based faith to command results. Fear free obedience. Job surrender to fear and surrender to torment. The things I really feared has come upon me. Fear free obedience. Peter subscribed to fear while walking on the sea and then began to sink. Just a step more to where he was going. Fear free obedience. Resolute and unwavering obedience. We are not careful to answer you. Your threat to our life makes no meaning. Our God whom we serve is able to deliver. And if, we, if it does not, and even if he does not, we won't bow. We have a commandment. We are tied to that commandment. Your threat will be standing. Resolute and unwavering obedience. Tireless obedience. Most of the time, you are just about getting there when. He wearies you. The devil wearies the believer to rob them of their inheritance. He wearies them to rob them of their inheritance. If God will do it, ought to have done it by now. But be ye steadfast, the word says. Unmovable. Always abide in the words of the Lord as much as he knows. At the end, he shall speak. Do a tell this way for him. As surely come to pass, it shall not turn. Tireless obedience is key to arriving there. Now, with an heavenly vision on church growth, when Jesus came and said, Stand up and follow me, big drama. Afternoon time, about 12 30, we were in prayers. Stand up and follow me, and I did. And I was following him. And he said, now, stop and turn back. And I did. And he showed me a layer of thick darkness on the roof of the church. He said, that is a blindfolding weapon the devil uses to misinterpret what I'm doing in this church, what he, Jesus, was doing in the church. And it's like he stood and said, now deal with it. And I said, you foul spirit of darkness. There's a light that shines in darkness, and darkness cannot undo. Get on the roof in the name of Jesus. And I saw it rolled away like a carpet. What a drama. It was real. I wasn't sleeping, I was walking. You can't be walking while you are sleeping. And then he now sat down and told me four things to do to keep the church growing. Sir. Now, in spite of that, that was at 24. Church was 24 that time. And then we began to walk. I did 16 seminars back to back every weekend. Now, the church rose to 90 in July. Come and see celebration, sir. With that life thing, it rose to 90. 90. We ordained our first set of deacons. Bishop Adam was one of them. Did you hear what I'm saying? Now, the highest attendance we saw... That year was 154 at our anniversary. My God. And then we began to go. You can't win the race without patience. The world is always in a hurry. I had a life encounter with the world of prosperity in 1982. But my salary was still 300. It was 300 in 1984. 300. 1,680. 1987. My God. I was having a great time. Yet I had life revelation of prosperity. Taught me by Jesus.
the seed was taking its time in the ground. Can I hear your amen? amen? The seed was taking its time in the ground. The seed was taking its time in the ground. The seed was taking its time in the ground. Let us therefore run with patience. The race set before us. That's the way it works. That's the way it works. Don't be slothful, but follow us of them through faith and patience inherit the promises. So obedience kept walking and walking and walking and walking, and it's still working up to now. See, obedience two years ago planned 5,000 churches, and he did it. Then he came again, planned 10,000 churches, and COVID 19 came. We didn't go to explain to God. He knew COVID 19 would come to threaten the world. For it came nothing to go by surprise. And he still delivered 10,404 churches in spite of lockdown. You can't lock down the truth. You can't lock down the truth. And then, double number of cells this year, my God. And we have crossed 20,000. 256 new home cells. Please embrace obedience. Fifteen years in church won't change your story. Only obedience of faith will. <laughs> now, foundership of a church won't change anybody's story. Callings from heaven, real callings, true callings, won't change anybody's story. There are still of ahead apostles in the world that are apostles of Christ in truth and in deed, but will not walk in obedience. Get down to Lagos. No, Lord, you told me to come down to Damascus. I heard you. So why Lagos now? Thank you. Since you know better than I do, stay there, and then everything will be going down. Going down. And you say, oh God, where are you? He said, I've left you. You know better than I do. And then, now, Lagos opened up. Grace came. We saw glory. We saw color. Now, come. Follow me. To the forest. Igwe Romane. Come and wrestle with this. This place. This is the place. Obedience still follow. No matter what he sent to you, he can still send you something else. So where your obedience stop is where the blessing stop. Please hear this today. 100 years in church can't change anyone's story. But obedience of one man can rewrite anybody's story. Genuine obedience, obedience from the heart can rewrite anyone's story. This is the summary of what we have done in our midweek services this month. Amen. Glory to God. Don't leave this country. Yes, sir. First year, second year, third year, fourth year. Yes, sir. Most people thought I would be in Maryland. I can't. I'm under instruction. Amen. Amen. I can't go to Benin Republic because it's outside this country. <laughs> I've never seen Ghana in four years. Weko can go there, Ka can go there, Boss can go there, Illustro can go there. But I'm under instruction. Obedience is sweet. Stand to your feet. Now, ask God to endue you with the spirit of obedience. Ask God for a fresh endowment with the spirit of obedience. Ask God for a fresh endowment with the spirit of obedience. Ask God for a fresh endowment. Everybody pray. Pray. What to say, what never to say, what to do, what you must never do, as contained in this world. Lift up your two hands, everyone. Ask for a fresh.
Ask God for a fresh outpouring of the spirit of obedience. Ask God for a fresh outpouring of the spirit of obedience. Ask God for a fresh outpouring of the spirit of obedience. In Jesus' precious name we are praying. Now, watch before we take the communion. We live in the kingdom that operates on keys. After Jesus confessed Christ as the Son of the living God, neither flesh nor blood has revealed to you, my Father, which is in heaven. And I give unto you the keys of the kingdom. The keys of the kingdom that provides you access to all provisions of redemption. The keys of the kingdom that empowers you to lock what you don't want and open what you want. Keys. They said, what about? Now, Luke 11, 52, he said, one to you lawyers, the lawyers of those days, for you have taken away the key of knowledge. So, revelation equals key. But holding the key in your hand, without engaging it, can that open the door? That's how we are. Many believers, they have a the bunch of keys in their hands. Amen. I can't get access to my room. They say, hold the key. The key said, no, no, no. The door should open on his own accord. I'm a child of living God. The door say, keep playing the fool. You sleep outside. You hold the key in your hand and your car is not starting. They say, why? The car should start. I have come here now. Where is the key? It's in my pocket. Many have these keys in their pocket. And they're suffering a shot out outside. Revelation without application equals frustration. So, 100 days of prayers and fasting, and there are many people in it, won't change your story as far as financial prosperity is concerned. We never, all this somebody is fighting me is not true. You can't fight the covenant and win. No. It's stronger than the worst demons. It's the strongest covering anybody can have. Operating by the word, put you in charge. Put you permanently in charge. Sir. It puts you in charge. Put you in charge. Consistently so. Consistently so. Not in season only, but both in season and out of season. Both in season and out of season. That's where we are as a church. We are just under an open heaven. Through the application of the covenant of abundance. Through the application of the covenant of abundance. And my God, we've been there all saints. Otherwise, we'll have had depth so clear. We have never had depth so clear. And we are not choking. We are just enjoying Him level by level. Level by level. Level by level. Level by level. What has gone into the art project is more than the cost of faith tabernacle. What has gone into it? Amen. No, you can't tell me the story. I was there. I know the story more than any of you. So I know the totality of what came out of it to build faith tabernacle. And I know what you have done now, what he has done by grace on this side, is above what it took to build faith tabernacle. Just come on and open heaven. You won't know stress. You know this place also no financial stress. If we do, you will know. Because it will tell you. Look, folks, we are under pressure. There is danger in the offering. Some three banks are running after us. Help God. Please help God. Hold meeting with your family tonight and see how much help you can render to God. God is dearly in need. You'll never hear that here forever. And we are not managing. No, we are not managing. Not that some fellows are carrying it. Nobody's carrying anything. Jesus is carrying everything. By simple, consistent 
tireless obedience. Consistent, simple, all out obedience. As you partake of the communion tonight, the obedience order of Christ that enthroned him eternally will be infused into each one of us. Amen. You believe that? Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Say your amen with confidence in God. Amen. Declare your amen with boldness. Amen. Now, declare that with violence. The same delightsome obedience of Christ that put a smile on his face while on the cross. Today, you met with me in paradise. You can't say that groaning. It's good news. Today, my friend, you met with me in paradise. Delightsome, cheerful, glad. Gladness, order of obedience. As we partake, as we partake of this communion, all of us. Tireless obedience. It shall remain our portion. Thank you, Jesus. Give the Lord the biggest hand of praise and be seated, please. Very quickly tonight, before we serve the communion, you are here. You want to surrender your life to Christ. You are welcome. I'll be glad to pray with you. And that includes all of our VN centers around Lagos and Otter. Jesus saved my soul. I want to be part of this glorious, colorful army of God's people. I want to be listed among this glorious end time army. Can I tell you this? The most enviable people on the planet are will be church people. Amen. Before Jesus became. Before Jesus returns. In fact, he said, all the kingdoms under the whole level shall be given to the saints of the Most High God. All the kingdoms. Daniel 7, 27. All the kingdoms under heaven. All the kingdoms under heaven. So, come join this glorious army. The Church of Christ. Not one denomination. The Church of Christ. An army of God's people. Blessing the tree and teaching the world the way to go before we gallop into heaven we shall be ruling in the midst of our enemies <laughs> before he returns so it's coming for a reigning church a glorious church a colorful church an enviable church and then we now step into eternity my God on the seas of gold it's priceless you are here you know you are not saved yet you may have been in church Perhaps you want to say, Jesus saved my soul. I want to experience the reality of redemption. I want to experience the reality of redemption. Wherever you may be, please stand to your feet and I'll pray with you. God bless you. God bless you. Jesus saved my soul. Stand to your feet. Jesus forgive me my sins. Stand to your feet. God bless you. Many more are getting on wherever you are. You have your own life to live. You don't have a scare. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. I spoke about an encounter with God. You can't have it except you are born again and you are a man of the Spirit. A woman of the Spirit. A boy of the Spirit. You can't have it. I was in the Spirit and I had. You can't hear what says to you on your feet except you are a man of the Spirit. Somebody said, you have never had an encounter with God. You better check it. Stand to your feet. I'll pray with you. And you will come on key and begin to assess what God is saying in your own life. Now, there are also people here tonight that need to rededicate their life to Christ. Everything looks blank. Blank. You know why? Unto us is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God, but to them that are without, without, they walked out. They are no longer home. With God. All these things are parables. What are they talking about? Is that real? You are in that condition. You want Jesus. You want to return back to Jesus. Stand to your feet. And I'll pray with you. You want to return back to Jesus. Stand to your feet. I'd like to pray with you. You want to say, Jesus, I'm coming back home. Stand to your feet. 
That includes all our friends across the various way centers. Please come quickly to the front, all of us who are standing. Come to the front quickly. Come to the front quickly. Now, whether you stood that time or not, you want to start right now, join us quickly. Join us quickly. Join us quickly. This thing is real. It's no makeup. This thing is real. It's no makeup. Somebody sitting by your side has a testimony. This thing is real. It's no makeup. This thing is real. It's no makeup. Somebody else is coming wherever you are. Just come quickly. This thing is no makeup. It's real. This thing is real. It's no makeup. In all the big centers across the other area right now, this thing is real. It's no makeup. This thing is real. It's no makeup. This thing is real. It's no makeup. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody else is joining us wherever you are. Please join us quickly. Join us quickly. What an opportunity tonight. What an opportunity tonight. What an opportunity of heaven tonight. Now, everybody standing across the various great centers, please bow your heads for prayers. Bow your heads for now. Stop filling the form. And lift up your right hand to heaven. Lift up your right hand to heaven. And pray this simple prayer of faith after me. Say after me, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I surrender my life to you tonight. I my life to you tonight. Forgive, me all my sins. Forgive me all my sins. Wash me with your blood. Wash me with your blood. I, believe I believe you died for me. On the third day you rose again. Day you rose again. That I may be justified. Be justified. Right, now, right now, I accept you I accept as my Lord. And my Savior. And I believe. My sins are now forgiven. Thank you, Jesus. For saving my soul. Thank you, Jesus. For restoring me back to the faith. I will serve you. The remaining days of my life. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Keep your hands up as I pray. Father, I pray over these precious souls. Your grace that brought them in. Let the same grace preserve them. I cover each of you with the precious blood of Jesus against all satanic assaults. You will run this race to the end. Amen. Now receive grace to live the overcomer's life. Sin shall no more have dominion over you. Amen. You have finally escaped tonight. Amen. You will make heaven after triumphant life on the earth. Amen. You will not make